Good evening, ladies as well as gentlemen. Papa Boar is here with some more Hearthstone Arena action. It's definitely Paladin time, been a while. Uh, Paladin, tough customer, the Paladin. Really difficult to do well with, in my opinion. It's, I think, my worst class stat-wise. Uh, I always respect Paladins when I come across them, but I do beat them most of the time. So anyway, here, easy pick, definitely the Azure Drake for some card advantage. Uh, another easy pick, Consecration is a good card to have. And another easy pick. I'm um, getting kind of lucky here, getting like one good card amidst a field of crap. Haha, <laughs> well. So what do we do here? I think the Wind Fury Harpy is good, but I don't know. I don't, I don't think you can take it over either of these things. So I'd rather double up on the mass removal than on the single target removal, but that's a difficult choice. Okay, True Silver Champion. So yeah, that's kind of the problem with Paladins. You get these four mana spikes. Interesting choice between the Stormwind Champion and the Guardian of Kings. So, Guardian of Kings has one fewer power, and it has the life gain, but the Stormwind Champion, of course, buffs all your other minions, which could be good. I'd rather not rely on other minions being present, though, and so, in fact, I will go for the life gain there. Ooh, Avenging Wrath, very solid. Good removal card. It's eight missiles, quite powerful. Faces Manipulator, definitely a good card, but not as good as Avenging Wrath. Okay. So I've gotten just a bunch of removal here, and <laughs> like two giant creatures. So normally I would take Light's Justice, but I feel like I need creatures here, so we'll take the Argent Protector, a very important card for Paladins. God, oh God, Blessing of Kings. No, I just don't want to load up on fours any more than I have to. Like, I still want to get actual four mana creatures. So in order for my entire deck to not be four mana, let's pass on the Blessing. Let's take a Murloc Tidehunter for some early plays. Well... This is a four mana creature. It's not empty board level, but it's still all right. And okay, I don't want to load up on. I mean, I do want some four mana creatures, but not necessarily this one. Let's take the Tide Hunter. Okay, so Silver Moon Guardian is a good four drop, but I need some three drops for sure. So we'll take a Raging Worgen to make sure we don't have a gaping hole there. This is unbelievably bad. We'll take a Dalaran Mage and be grumbly about it. Ah, Flesh Eating Ghoul versus Chillwind Yeti. This is like the fifth Repentance I've seen. I want to make sure we have. Some three drops. So we'll take the ghoul. It can be very good. Wouldn't mind picking up a yeti later. Interesting here. Do I take the violet teacher? Or one of these two drops? Um, you know... <sighs> Wild Power Mancer can be good with Consecration. It'll deal three damage across the board. We'll take the violet teacher. I don't know. It's hard to say. But I do need some real four drops, quote-unquote. Oh, this is bad. Oh, uh, man. Well, I guess we'll take a true silver champion... And I guess I'll take Humility and not be happy about it. Organ number two over the total junk. Organ number three? I don't know, man. Sure. It's probably too many organs. Okay, now we'll take a Knife Juggler. Hmm. It's so hard to, to take four drops when you've already got that many four mana cards. Uh, let's take a Scarlet Crusader there. Okay, so now I need now I need some five, six, seven drops. Uh, this, this deck, this draft is not obliging me. Oh god, uh, this is too many Argent Protectors, but it's also too many True Silver Champions, but I can't take Eye for an Eye. Golly. I guess we'll take one of those and just be wasting them. Oh my god. <laughs> These Paladin spells. Oh my god. Well, can I please get something big? Oh no, not a chance. I really don't need any more of these spells. This, this has been like the craziest draft where it's just like non-stop four mana spells. Ah, finally. Okay, so what's more important? Getting a good five drop or getting a big guy? I think the five drop's actually more important to overall success, so I'll take it, but it's tough. Ah, can I get something big, please? Well, this is actually one of those times where I think the Ravenhold Assassin is the right move. This deck is entirely two, three, four, mostly four, with very little uh, in the way of five and six. So... I might need to help. Need to enlist the Ravenholt Assassin's help to finish off my opponents. Now, one regret I have is that when I it was like Wind Fury Harpy versus Hammer of Wrath versus Consecration. Given how many Consecrations, Hammers of Wrath, and True Silver Champions this this draft just flung at my face nonstop, I do wish I had taken the Wind Fury Harpy there. Okay, well, this is a fine opening hand. Against a mage, I mean, really against anyone, it's not that likely to survive, uh, this knife juggler. But if she does have a slow start and, and doesn't play a turn one coin play, 
could definitely play this. No, please pass the turn. Please pass the turn. No, you're just looking at your cards to see what they do because you're new. And now you're going to pass the... Thank you. So this is the problem with having too many Argent Protectors. You end up with the Argent Protectors you can't use. But if she doesn't have a Frostbolt, if she plays a creature, you could Divine Shield, kill it with the Knife Juggler. It's a really great start for Paladins. Uh, oh, no, that's actually okay. I'm okay with that. That's fine. So, yeah, my Knife Juggler doesn't fling knives anymore, but it's still card advantage now because I get to do this. Kill off the Owl. And then we're in pretty good shape. I'd say that I've, I've won the opening here with my nice curve and my Argent Protector. Now the Defender of Argus will probably be dropping down unless I have a really compelling reason not to. That is definitely not a compelling reason to avoid playing Defender of Argus. Mirror Image! Boo! Boo! Okay. Well, I could consider pl playing a Raging Worgen now. Because I don't need the buff on these guys yet. Well, I, I kind of do. The Novice Engineer could hit one and then Hero Ability finish it off. Alright, that's fine. So we got some card advantage now. I've actually gotten two sources of card advantage. Number one was when a Knife Juggler killed the Owl with the help of Divine Shield. Second source of card advantage, I'm now killing off the Mirror Image. Got a huge board here for this early in the game. This is only turn four. I mean, this is gigantic. And all she has is 1-1. One, one. Can't even kill anything with the help of hero ability. Just gonna coin something out. All right, let's take a look. Could be something problematic. Uh, that's, that's okay. That is okay. She made a little bit of a misplay though. She should have used the Novice Engineer to attack into the Argent Protector. That way it would die when the Abomination blows up. Now, I just, you know, run in my Knife Juggler and I think that's, that's it, right? I could play this guy and put a Divine Shield on the Knife Juggler. But then he dies. That seems a bit silly. Yeah, we'll just do this. See, now her novice engineer dies for no reason. Okay. So now, these guys are set to be killed by the hero ability. So let's protect the more important one. Pulling another Raging Worgen. Flame Strike is still, like, many, many turns away. I have a, a ridiculous board for this early in the game. She still can't even play a blizzard. Oh my gosh. Well, this is interesting, because if she uses a spell now, the Worgen's going to get enraged. Uh, she really needed two of the missiles to hit the Worgen, so she, or one of them to hit the Worgen so that she could finish it off. But now I've got this enraged Worgen here. Yeah, okay, that actually made sense, because now the Wild Pyromancer, you know, it was going to kill off all my one hit point stuff. I get to hit her for 8, but that leaves her with this thing on the field. Hmm. So do I actually hit her for 8 is the question, or do I just content myself with a hit for 4 and then trade? I think I'll content myself with a hit for 4 and then trade. This is fine. So we'll do that. Pass the turn. Fleshed and Ghoul is getting nice and big. So she's got 5 cards to 4, because that wild pyromancer gave her mega value. That was a very good pyromancer, I have to confess. Ah, oh, she really cleared me out. The bear is a nuisance, but I can run in. This will hit for six, so Flesh Eating Ghoul definitely earning its keep right here. Demolisher. Mm, I might need to take a little detour to kill the Demolisher. Yeah, I can't let that live, I don't think. So I'm, this is interesting now how I do this. One way is I can use the Worgen to kill the bear, use the Ghoul to kill the Demolisher. The Ghoul then becomes a 7-2. Another way is actually to use the Ghoul to kill the Bear. The Worgen will attack the Demolisher, turn on Wind Fury, but it won't die. Unless I use Consecration, but Consecration won't kill the Bear. I think this makes more sense. Do I leave the Demolisher alone, or do I deal six damage to her face? I gotta get used to the fact I'm not a hunter here. I need to, I need to still play for control. This is really unfortunate that I can't do anything with these Consecrations. Oh, that's too bad. You know, if one of these had been... A, you know, I think one of those could have been a Hammer of Wrath. It would have been a lot better. I would have gotten card advantage, killed the bear, kept my creature. Might have been a misdraft. Maybe Hammer of Wrath is better than Consecration if you're, like, already picking a second one. And you have one of each. Alright, I'm just gonna copy it. Does she have a Frostbolt to kill it? She doesn't. Well, now is a good time to use Consecration, that's for sure. My Recruit actually survived. That's cool. Humility, not a good card. I knew it wasn't a good card when I took it. Uh, the ghoul gets big. Yep, 
that was definitely better than a chill wind yeti that's for sure okay so does she have a flame strike or a blizzard to clear me out i mean she could still win because this is useless and this is just two damage i still have to hit her for three more damage card she just top decked card she already had That doesn't matter. Does she have an arcane explosion? No, she doesn't. Fantastic. Well, now I'm very close to winning. I've gotten down to three, down to one. Just need one more point of damage before I win. There's no point in using humility here because all my stuff's at one health, so it doesn't actually matter. My recruits here, three recruits on the field against a mage is pretty remarkable, actually. You really aren't going to see that very often. But she's had things to do. I don't think she misplayed or anything. She just had things to do. Well, she needs a defender of Argus right now to put the kibosh on my killing blow. Does she have it? It's amazing how often I find myself praying that my opponent doesn't have defender of Argus. Fireball is not the hero that Gotham needs, so this consecration sits dead in my hand. And that is game number one. Well, I definitely don't feel as good about this deck as I feel about the Hunter deck I just played. And maybe, you know, this little nagging problem with Paladins is, is, is really illustrated by this draft, where Hammer of Wrath, Consecration, True Silver Champion, they're all fine cards. The draft just threw them at me nonstop. But, you know, it's annoying having that many four mana cards. It's different than having, like, you know, five Hammer of Wrath than it is having five Frost Bolts. I would play with five Frost Bolts without a moment's hesitation, because they're cheap. But four mana cards to that to those extremes don't really work very well. I think the Paladin's over-reliance on four mana cards really weakens the class. You either, like, don't get any of them, or for each one, you either, like, don't get it at all, in which case, that's bad. Or you get a whole bunch of them, but that's bad too. You have to just get, like, one of each. And it it's really nit makes the draft really nitpicky. Anyway, it's a win. I'll take a win. Up against another mage, Vlau the mage. It's a weird name. So will we have the same kind of start as last time? Well, this is certainly a good opening hand. I think this is a keeper, honestly. You just uh, pass on turn one. And then play this on turn two, this on turn three. Hopefully one of these survives. Then you can play this on turn three. This on turn four, or the true silver champion if this doesn't hit hard enough. I just need her to pass the turn and we'll be in good shape. Okay, good. No point in coining out this Tidehunter, I'm afraid. Well, is there? Uh, you know, I'm going to do it, actually. I'm going to do it. So she can ping one off if she wants, but I still have the 1-1. One, one. Then I'm going to make a recruit, so she shouldn't be able to kill them both. And then I'll definitely have something to shatter some cleric. I just didn't want her to play a 2-drop. Then I play this in response. She pings one off, kills the other with her 2-drop, with her you know. I wouldn't have made this play with other classes, though. It's specifically because I can add a 1-1 one, one to the field that I really liked the feel of that play. Not to say that that was the correct play, but it felt right. Now, if she plays a simple 3-3, three, three, I'm actually in a lot of trouble because the Shattered Sun Cleric could buff one, but then I have to throw them both into the 3-3. Three, three. I actually wouldn't mind if she pings one off. That would be her whole turn. And then I can buff the other one. Ah, uh, that's actually annoying. So she kills one with her hero ability. The Leper Gnome only cost one mana. So the Shattered Sun Cleric does nothing here, actually. This thing can already get the kill. So we're going to play the Panther instead. Now, if you've been a longtime fan of Papa Boris, I have to make a very important announcement. I have come around on this Panther. The Panther, you know, it's an empty board card. You can drop it happily onto an empty board, which I like. It um, sometimes is amazing. Like, it'll kill Azure Drakes and, and uh, four mana pandas. Worst case, you trade it through a two drop. That's certainly unimpressive. But... A lot of the times, you know, it's just a solid card and your opponent can't kill it. In the end game, it can be really good. You know, you can, like, put it down and that's four damage coming at the face. The opponent can't interact with very easily. So, I've, I've really come around on the, on the card. I'm not exactly sure what made me s just, like, really stand against it in the past. I mean, 4-2 is not as good as 3-3, sure. But the fact that it has stealth means you can drop it comfortably and know to live. So I'm, maybe that's what it is. I just appreciate things that you that, that can definitely survive. Because it's so hard sometimes to keep your stuff alive in this game. Okay, so here uh, I could play the Silverhand Knight, which is definitely the better card in the abstract. But the problem is then this Imp Master survives. So I'd say that my opponent successfully 
slowed down my desire to play a really good 5 drop. I'm going to kill the Imp Master, and I'm also going to kill the Imp. I like to keep her board clear if I can. This is actually a decent hand right now. I've got buffs, I've got removal, more removal, and a really good 5 drop onto an empty field. It'll die to Flame Strike, sure, but I'd say that I have some card advantage. I can survive a Flame Strike and still win this game. Because I killed her Mirror Images, I killed her Imp Master. I, um... Yeah, I just, I've just gotten ahead on cards a couple of times now. She spends pretty much her whole turn killing my 2-4, which is kind of funny. We'll do this. So the reason I'm doing that rather than the Azure Drake is I don't need the card right now. I have plenty of cards. And I'd rather put more total power and toughness on the board than less. Because spell damage doesn't help that much with Consecration at the moment. The advantage of putting two on here also makes it more likely that I'll be able to buff something with the Shattered Sun Cleric. Like, if I played this and she just texted it, or, sorry, polymorphed it, or, you know, just killed it somehow, you know, it wouldn't really do much for me. Okay, so she's getting a card out of that, but I was already, like, a card or two ahead, so I don't really mind. And I have a bajillion different ways of killing this thing. Hmm, I could use Shattered Sun Cleric, it'll just, then the Knight will just Stone Cold kill it. Still leaves me with four mana. I could also play 4 mana, Hammer of Wrath, draw a card, use the Squire to kill it. I kind of want to use my weapon to kill it, though, because... I mean, I have another weapon sitting in my hand. It's, it's sort of silly. So, yeah, we'll, well, I guess we'll trade out the Squire, play Shattered Sun Cleric. And taking a little bit of a risk, I might be running into a news, but let's put the weapon in hand. So it's ready to attack. I actually have a guy who survives Flame Strike now, so she doesn't want to play that. And then the Azure Drake gets me a card, Hammer of Wrath gets me a card. Polymorph, that's fine. Especially if she pings it off. Yep, she has nothing to do. That's totally fine. I actually have a lot of burn here. This is 8, 11, 13. I mean, this could be like another 8 damage. I could just play it right now just to go for the burn here. She'd be down to 16 health, down to 13, down to 10, down to 2 down to zero. I mean, technically, I win if she doesn't have any life gain or taunt. That's a bit risky, though. I don't see the need to take that big of a risk. So let's hedge our bets. We're gonna swing there. Swing here. Do I play the Azure Drake? It'll die to Flame Strike. I'll play the Azure Drake. I should have, sorry, I should have done that first. You should always draw cards first. Uh, okay, we're gonna make a recruit rather than this, and the reason for that is I don't want to overextend too much against Flame Strike, and the Murloc Tidehunter is really great after playing a Knife Juggler. I can play Knife Juggler this, get two free Knife Flings, and then I can still Hammer of Wrath. All right, she's got Flame Strike, so good thing I didn't play that. But now, I can play the Knife Juggler. Okay, so let's do a quick count again. She's got um, four, so this is four, seven, nine, 11, 12, 13 damage off the Knife Juggler. I mean, <sighs> Avenging Wrath does technically kill her. So I can do this, she'll be down to nine health. Down to 5 health. Down to... And then next turn I kill her. Unless she life gains. These cannot be stopped except for by counter spells. Still, that seems a bit risky to me. Let's just let's just hedge our bets. One of my favorite things to do. So, we'll do this. Get two flings at her face. Let's make a recruit. Get another fling at her face. And sure, I'll, I'll hit her with the weapon. So now I am threatening the kill with 10 mana, Avenging Wrath plus Consecration, or Avenging Wrath plus Hammer of Wrath. We'll kill her. If she plays creatures, I should be able to clear enough of out. Ah, Arcane Explosion is a very efficient way of clearing my board. Hmm, well, I might have played too conservatively here. Like, if she drops some big stuff to distract the Avenging Wrath, then, like that, yeah. I might not be able to kill her now. Yeah, I should have gone for it. Had I done this last turn, I'd be winning right now. Organ Infiltrator. Lots of stealth in this deck, I notice. So I've got a poor man's flame strike with these two consecrations. Um, that would take her down to six. Down to three. Hmm. Um, Alright, we'll do this. This. Let's do one of these consecrations. See if I can get this Worgen to go through. I probably played too conservatively. I, I'm starting to think that I should have just played this. She would have needed a lot of life gain and taunts to not 
die. So like the first time I considered doing it when she was at like 20 some, 24 health, it was probably correct not to play it. But when she was at 17 health and still had no creatures on the board, I probably should have just played this. Sea Giants. Well, that doesn't really matter too much unless she plays a Sun Fury Protector, which she didn't. Okay. Well, let's find out if that is Ice Barrier. Let's see, I can't kill her. This is five damage. Yeah, let's find out if it's Ice Barrier. I hope it's Vaporize. It's Ice Barrier. Damn it. Oh my god, if I lost this game, that would be really depressing. So now I can't kill her anymore. She has too much health. Oh my god. Why didn't I just play this when she was at 17 health? That would have been smartest. If she has a flame strike or another board clear, like a blizzard, then she'll probably beat me with this giant. Oh my god. Well, she wanted this one or the worgen. The worgen was the best. These two would have been the best for me. She got kind of like a middle ground there. That's fine. So the giant can kill the worgen. That's okay, I suppose. Then I can finish it off with a hammer of wrath, draw a card. Maybe use avenging wrath. That should probably kill both of her creatures and deal damage to her. Ah, oh, she's going to polymorph. Interesting. I wonder why she did that. It's not exactly that threatening. She could have just used the sea giant. Hmm. Okay, she's going to go for the kill. I guess that makes a certain kind of sense. So, let's try Hammer of Wrath to see if this is Spellbender. Or Counterspell. It's neither. Humility is pretty good. Let's just check. Do I want to use Avenging Wrath, maybe? No, not really. So, yeah. We'll humiliate that thing. Um, it's still because it's going to be able to kill the Scarlet Crusader, but whatever. The more that I can distract her, the better I'll be. Wow, she's, she's playing with two ice barriers. Well, I don't think that's a good choice. I think that's a mistake. But it's a mistake that happens to work out well here. Even so, she's still set to lose. I mean, I've got Avenging Wrath versus her 1-6 with a full board. So I don't think she's doing that well. Oh, Stormwind Champion is a pretty good card right there, truth be told. Oh, she's going for the kill. Interesting. I would have killed the Scarlet Crusader myself. Okay. Well, let's see where this Avenging Wrath lands. Okay. Well. I think it's worth getting rid of Stormwind Champion. And we're in a top deck war. She is at a disadvantage. She has less life. I have a better... Well, actually, our hero abilities cancel, so that doesn't matter. Oh, no! That's not good. That was a good top deck. So now the hero ability of mine doesn't stick. Humility, which I complained about, is actually keeping me in the game. But this game is dragging out way too long. I should have won a flippin' ages ago if I had just played Avenging Wrath when she was at 17 health and had no creatures. I was like, well, I don't want to, you know, run into anything. But really, what was I going to run into? Nothing. Okay, so this is pretty cool. The Worgen can actually run into Sea Giant and become enraged. Hopefully this isn't a good card. Doomsayer! Oh, jeez. Well, shit. Uh, that's not good. So I don't think I can kill this thing, unless I could turn on Winfrey myself, but I can't. So, yes. This is the most damage that I can deal. I can get this down to two health. Oh my god, don't play Violet Teacher here. It is just about to die. I'm making a recruit, because why not? Ah, what's funny is if she has a Pyroblast, she'll actually win the game. That's, that's irritating. I'd say actually a mage's hero ability is probably better than a paladin's because the mage can choose to counter my ability or to keep dealing damage, whereas I don't have a choice. Mine's just always the recruit, so she's probably got the better end of it here. Okay. Well, I don't want to play this because it might be mere entity over there, so I have to play the Violet Teacher first. And then this next time. It is not mere entity. Good. Is this a third ice barrier? She should be at negative 16 health. These ice barriers. So ridiculous. It's like my bad play canceled out her bad play to make it really awesome for her. Fireball. Well, I can't blame her for doing that. She's playing for her outs, but she is not lucky. I could... You, it looks like I can kill her, but if this is Vaporize or Ice Barrier, which is pretty likely given that it wasn't Mirror Entity. I don't think she was ever champion. Oh, well... Okay, it still could be Ice Block. 
Yeah, you know, just in case it's ice block, I don't want to lose to that. So we're just going to go ahead and do this. It heals me for six. Got the kill next turn. If it's ice block, then, you know, I, I just made a pro play by not running in with True Silver Champion. And now if she has, like, a Frost Bolt or a Fireball or something, had this been ice block and had she top deck Frost Bolt or Fireball, she would have killed me. I don't see any particular reason to give your opponent outs if you don't have to. Now, anyway, it was a non-interactive creature, so it, it wouldn't have mattered. And I w if, if I had attacked last turn and this were Ice Block, I would have... I would be killing her this turn. Instead, I get her down to one. Always with Ice Block, get her as low as possible before getting the blow down to zero. It is Ice Block, okay. Well, I'm gonna kill that. And I'm gonna make a pro move here. I'm gonna attack with True Server Champion. Oh, I can't attack her. That's weird. That's weird. Okay, so if she gets Pyroblast, she actually wins. But Fireball does not win. If I lost to a Pyroblast right now, this would just be like the most ridiculous game I've played in ages. She's gone to six cards. I've gone to six cards. What on earth is this? God, this could have ended ages ago if I had just played Avenging Wrath. So yeah, that was a really crushing mistake on my part. So this is a good learning, learning game, folks. This is a good illustration of what happens. If you're too conservative sometimes, sometimes, like, like whatever I avoided, whatever of her outs that I avoided by not using Avenging Wrath just to deal eight damage to her face, were not as likely as I was to lose the, the game that actually ensued. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please like and or subscribe, and I'll see you soon with the rest of this run. This is not going to be a 12-0 run, so losses are coming. Brace yourselves.